Dímelo, mi gente. What up? It's your boy Gus back with another Q&A Fridays where I answer your burning hot questions about jewelry and watches. We have a jam packed episode. We got questions like if a sleek lock is better than a box lock. We also got questions if my bust down watch is a good investment or not. If you're in the market for a Cuban link chain or a custom piece or a custom time piece as well, visit gusvillajewelry.com. Our telephone number is on there. You can call any one of the guys in the sales staff or me directly, and we're here to help you out. Without further ado, creep, hit me with that intro music. <laughs> Question number one and a very hot debate comes from underscore Davy Jones underscore. He wants to know what holds up the longest, the sleek lock or a box lock? That is an insanely hard question to answer because it depends on how these locks are being made. Number one, are they handmade or are they being casted? So if your box lock is casted, it's gonna last a lot less than if it were handmade. Number two, it also depends on what kind of carrot it is. If it's pure gold, pure 24 carat, I don't care if it's handmade, that box lock isn't gonna last so long. And let me explain to you why. Box locks by design, by design, doesn't really matter who makes them, are not that good at holding tension long term. In other words, whoever created a box lock 50, 60 years ago, however long it was, didn't really think about the longevity of the design itself because the design itself is pretty crappy. I've made some picture perfect box locks that only last four years and I handmade them. It's the actual design that sucks. A lot of people always ask me, why don't you do handmade lock boxes on your silver? It doesn't matter even if I hand make them, it's still going to lose tension because silver is too soft. Now let's go to the sleek locks. Sleek locks, you can hand make them as well. But again, their tension depends on a piece that you flip over and tighten. Now, if you hand make that, it could last you a very long time. However, in my experience, I've been able to tell that because I designed them to be very, very thick flip locks, they last longer because of the tension that I design into them. Now, that doesn't mean that your box lock is only going to last a year. Guys, don't take what I'm telling you so literal. This is long term. This is 10, 15, 20 years down the road. You're fine with either or. To be honest with you, both of them just hold up just fine. It really just depends on the person and how often they're going to use it and how they're mangling these things around their neck. Be normal. Take care of your stuff for the love of Christ, people. But sleek locks are a little bit better. At least mine are. Question no meta de comes from Johnny underscore D underscore wants to know why is it that people said that investing in an iced out Rolex is not a good investment? OK, let's break this down as simple as we can, right? What makes or drives any price in any sort of business doesn't matter what it is. It's supply and demand. If there's a huge demand for it and there's little supply, prices go up. If there's a lot of supply and there's little demand, prices go down. This is very basic. I'm not I'm not revolutionizing. I'm not breaking any ground with what I'm telling you. Now, what happens when you bust down a watch? Most people are not going to want bust down watches typically. So what happens is if I'm a jewelry store owner, for instance, you guys come to my shop and say, hey, Gus, I want a watch and I take out a case of watches. The ones that are going to sell the least are the ones that are bust down because those are very specific customers that are looking for that type of watch. So the reason that it loses value is because there's not that many people demanding those type of watches. If a lot of people were constantly buying bust down watches, it would not be a bad investment. But because you have to wait for that customer to come to your store and specifically want that is the reason why people don't like to pay for it. And not to mention a lot of people like the fact that it's original. They don't want something that's modified. They don't like to put aftermarket bands or some sort of shitty diamonds that you found in the back alleyway. <laughs> I know I always talk about back alleyways as if all the jewelry world were like <laughs> hustled in the back alley. Let me you know, slang some Rolex. <laughs> when you break things down into the nitty gritty, it's supply and demand. A bust down watch is going to take a lot longer to sell than a regular plain Jane watch. And therefore, it has a lot less value. That's just the reality of it. Question number three comes from S. Dotson874. Wants to know, can I clean my jewelry too much in an ultrasonic cleaner? 
I like to shine, but I don't want to hurt it. <laughs> I feel like that's one of those memes where it's like, but does like it, they're like slashing the 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 fish in half, and they're like, does it hurt the fish? <laughs> No, man, you can clean it as much as you want an ultrasonic. It's not going to do anything. It, it's not going to hurt the metal. Water vibrating is not going to hurt the chain. Or maybe it'll hurt its feelings. <laughs> it's a good question. I don't want to shit on your question, but like, come on. It's not going to hurt the piece. It's fine. It's water. It's vibrating water. You ever been in a jacuzzi and the water starts vibrating on your nuts? It's kind of like the same way. It's not going to hurt it. It just feels good. You know, next question. Question number four comes from Tarzan5. He wants to know what the hell is a Wimbledon dial? A uh, Wimbledon dial is a very, very in-demand date just. Uh, in 1978, Rolex and Wimbledon were officially partners and Rolex became the timekeeping watch of the Wimbledon tournament. You'll see that there is a Rolex clock sitting right in the middle of the court and it's always displaying the time. In 1978, these two companies fused together and to celebrate it, in 2009, Rolex came out with the Wimbledon dial Datejust 2, which is essentially a dark rhodium dial with Roman numerals and the green in the inside to match the grass on Wimbledon's field. It's an absolutely beautiful dial. I love the Wimbledon dial. It came out in the Datejust 2, but then afterwards in 2014, they also added it to the 36 and now the Datejust 41. As we know, the Datejust 2 is discontinued, so the Wimbledon dial on the Datejust 2 is no longer available, but it's still carrying on on the 36 six and 41 and to be honest with you in my opinion it's the absolute best type of dial that you can get on a date just yes i know there are a lot of people out there that love the rhodium dial that one is gorgeous and so is the chocolate dial as well let me let, let's not kid ourselves but there's just something about that wimbledon dial I like it so much, I could even have it on a smooth bezel date just. And there are very few dials that I like on a smooth bezel because I don't really like the smooth bezel. I'd rather have a fluted bezel. However, if it comes with a Wimbledon dial, sign me up because I love it. Love it. Question number five and the final one. We saved the best for last. Jay Torado 47 wants to know, what makes your gold over silver better than any other companies out there? Oh, it's time to flex on these holes. Two things. Number one, we only use gold and we only use silver. So we don't do gold over stainless steel, gold over brass, gold over copper. I do gold over silver. So two things that are going to make it stand apart from the rest of the competition. Number one, I'm only using precious metals. I'm not going to use any one of these cheap base metals. And then number two, you're actually hand making and hand electroplating. Now, it's not hand electroplating. Let me let me take one step fast. The point is, there's a person actually doing it, and it's not just some machine. A lot of these electroplating that you see that go for 100 bucks or whatever it is, they have very, very little QC, and the plating on them is probably one or two macrons or something like that. So in other words, after about two weeks, that plating is going to fall off. We use real gold. We hand make you that silver piece, and we triple plate it in 14 karat gold. Now. A lot of people ask me on questions for whatever reason on YouTube all about my gold over silver. As you guys notice, I don't talk about my gold over silver even on my website or on my Instagram feed just because it's such a small part of my business and it's a part of my business to be honest with you in all seriousness and all truthfulness and in and, and full transparency. It is such a high maintenance type of product that I sell. And it's such a small part of my overall book of business. It's not something that I like to advertise. When I open up my store, which is coming in about a month, I am going to be discontinuing gold over silver completely from my website. You will not be able to get it from me at all. Right now, it is still available. So if you're in the market for it, you have about 30 to 45 days before I completely remove it and I am not bringing it back. Yeah, they look cool. Yeah, for some customers, it may be a viable option for those that don't wanna spend thousands of dollars on a real solid gold one, or maybe even just stick with silver. And for that, I understand. However, from a business standpoint, it really just doesn't make sense to continue on going with gold over silver. So if you're in the market for it, buy it now, because after about 45 days, you will never see it again. If you guys have purchased gold over silver from me, though, I will still maintenance it to the day I die. However, if you want a new piece, it's just not going to be available anymore. Sad and somber news. Riot. <laughs> Riot. Riot. I made my decision. I'm sticking with it. That about does it once again for another Q 
Q&A Fridays, the originators of the Q&A Fridays. As always, if you guys have any questions, next week i am not putting up a post on instagram i'm going to ask the questions from people right here in these comments that i'm going to read and respond each and every one of them but i'm going to be responding next week in the q a fridays of next week it's going to be called youtube q a fridays <laughs> that's such a crappy name i'm not good with names guys i'm really not good with names however as always if you're in the market for a cumin link chain or a watch or any custom jewelry visit gusvillajewelry.com Gus via jewelry. <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next video. 45 days, gold over silver, gone. See you later.